exercise 41.15. This exercise is to be solved manually. Consider the region enclosed by the graphs of y equals 2, 3 minus square root of negative x squared plus 8x minus 15, y equals 2, 2 minus square root of 4 minus x, and y equal to x. Part A. Sketch a quality graph of the described region. Provide a graphic approximation of the area of the region. Part B. Provide a calculus calculation that yields the exact area of the region. Part C. Assess the correctness of parts A and B by examining for a consistency between the two results. Part A. Sketch a quality graph of the described region. Provide a graphic approximation of the area of the region. Let's try to uh, explore these graphs a little bit here to see what kind of coordinate system we will need to adequately illustrate everything. And our first function here, let's see, what do we see? Looks like uh, initially it's a y equal to a square root of a quadratic expression in x. All right, we're familiar with this situation. What kind of graph is expected here? As per the uh, lesson that you hopefully you've checked out on previous vid, we could recognize this as being a lower semicircle translated up three units. To get the details ironed out here, which we will need because we're about to graph this now, we at least know that we should be trying to uh, put this equation into pretty much the standard form for a circle and proceed from there. All right, so we'll. Uh, start off here by doing just that. Okay, and now that we're here, we see this here would be a circle of radius 1, centered at 4, 3. Going back, looking at where we started from, we know we actually want the lower semicircle centered at 4, 3, whose radius is 1. Okay, I'll make a note of that. All right, so initially this puts the activity of the graph in, well, quadrant 1 so far. Let's take on that second function and see what we think about that. All right, so now we notice that this basically has the form of a y equals to a square root of a linear expression in x. All right, so now we expect a semi-parabola with this negative sign, a lower semi-parabola. And the x-coordinate of the vertex will be at x equal to 4, All right? And the y-coordinate would be 2. Okay, we can make a note of that. Thirdly, the uh, equal third function. Okay, this one. This is simply the uh, diagonal line that passes through the origin. Okay, so sort of just mentally sort of visualizing what goes on here. It looks like everything is in the first quadrant and the uh, action seems to be all going on with rather small coordinates for x and y. So small, in fact, I think my coordinate system is going to be graphed with one centimeter equals to one half unit. Okay, I'll try that. Let's see what happens. Usually, when graphing a semicircle, I only plot and label the two terminal points on it. In this particular case, 3-3 three, three, and 5-3. However, because I kind of suspect something about the point directly beneath the center, I went ahead and mentally computed it, noted it was the point 4-2. Now that's the vertex of that semi-parabola, so I've gone ahead and labeled that point as well, and now I've circumvented the necessity for any algebraic calculation of the intersection of those two curves. All 
Okay, so it looks like our enclosed region is about in order there. Now let's see, as far as getting a graphic approximation of this, let's see, this region seems to be roughly triangular shaped. I think I'll draw a, uh, some, a dashed line triangle that seems to resemble this region and use that as the graphic approximation for the area. This final line, I want to make it so that all of the region that's outside of the present dashed triangle will be used to fill in the voids. That will about do it. Okay, and I suppose I'll dash this line here so that I will really have a fully dashed triangle to refer to. Okay, there's our idea. Now we've uh, used the same scale for each x, for both the x-axis and y-axis, so I can continue to use that same scale in any direction on the drawing. That'll be convenient. Space looks to be about 3.7. Now that was 3.7 centimeters. Remember, it's one half centimeter per. Uh, unit here. So that is actually about 1.9 units. And the height or altitude looking to be about 8.2 centimeters. That corresponds to 4.1 units. Okay just doing a little bit of uh, arithmetic here. I think just to simplify this, I'll call that 4 instead of 4.1, so then half of that will be 2, and then I have about uh, 2 times 1.9, or about 3.8 square units. Okay, there's our Graphic approximation of the area. Part B. Provide a calculus calculation that yields the exact area of the region. As for a calculus calculation, I've noticed that this region has some special properties that has me thinking about using a strategy of net area of simpler regions. And the reason is this. One, there was this large straight line boundary here. Secondly, there is this circular boundary here. And not just any old circular boundary, but one that started here at 3-3. Three, three. Remember the circle, semicircle, lower semicircle had a center at 4-3. And when we computed the vertex of that semi-parabola, that was at 4-2. Well, 4-2 just happens to be directly due south of our center here, meaning that this region in here is a exactly a quarter circle. Okay, so think about this then. We can view the area of the blue enclosed region as being the area of this dark lined trapezoid minus this quarter circular region area minus the area beneath this curve from 0 to 4. Okay, that'll be our strategy. All right, so we've uh, put this in writing now. The area of the region is the area of that solid line trapezoid minus the area of the quarter circle region minus the area beneath the graph of y equals to 2 minus square root of 4 minus x from x equals to 0 to x equal to 4. Okay, this will enable us to use uh, some plane geometry as well as a little bit of calculus to, to get this obtained. So suppose we'll put a equals to here and an asterisk to refer the reader down to, let's say, three subcalculations. So perhaps starting here, we could talk about area of the trapezoid. Okay, plane geometry formula, average base times height one half. B1 
plus b2 times h. In this case here, looking at our graph there, one base, say the smaller one, would be a uh, one unit of length. The longer base there is four units long. The height or altitude is three units long. Five by three, fifteen divided by two. Okay, we'll say fifteen halves. Takes care of that. All right. How about the area of the uh, quarter circle region? Okay, we know the area of a circle is pi squared, so a quarter circle would be, of course, one fourth that. Here in our case, we found from our writing uh, our the equation in standard form there revealed the radius was 1 and so then we of course have and this ends up being then just pi over 4 square units lastly this area beneath the graph alright that's a very simple definite integral that we immediately uh, write up since we're just talking about the area from a positive value function to the x-axis and in this case here that means integral 0 to 4 of the 2 minus 4 minus x square root dx and how about this one okay looks like a u substitution will be efficient here let's go with a u equal to the radicand there in that case, du would become a negative 1 dx. I like to deal with this as follows. Let's create a negative dx. Compensate, putting a negative out there. Furthermore, we have that when x equals 0, that means that what happens to u? It'll be 4 minus 0, 4. When x equals 4, this means that u will equal... 4 minus 4 or 0. Okay, so then this new integral starts to look like negative of, and it's going from 4 to 0. 2 minus the square root of u du. Since there seem to be a, a lot of n negative signs here, I can make, maybe make one more step by Sending, distributing this back through here and then having a square root of u minus 2 du okay square root of u that's u to the 1 half power rule antiderivative of u to the 3 halves divide by 3 halves which means to multiply by 2 thirds and then a minus 2u this goes between 4 and 0 Okay, keep going here. So then, in the case of zero, all right, we can see that putting zero here gives you zero and minus zero. All right, that's just all one big zero there. Now, minusing the four evaluation, we have here two thirds times four to the three halves minus two times four. Okay, what about this? All right, four is really two squared. So now I can use the power rule of exponents to multiply the 2 by the 3 halves and get the third power there. 2 to the third is 8. 8 by 2 thirds is 16 thirds. Minusing this uh, 8 here. And this is a negative in front of everything because of this. And then uh, 8 is also known as 24 thirds. 16 minus 24 thirds is a negative 8 thirds. Then the negative of that would be back to positive 8 thirds. Okay, we're ready to take these three subcalculations back to the main line of the equation. This looks to be then 15 halves minusing pi over 4 minusing 8 thirds 
Okay, the two uh, fractions here. Let's see, we're going to have to go to six, aren't we? So this is needs a three over three build up. This needs a two over two build up. And we're looking at a 45 minus 16, it's 29 sixths. Minusing pi over four. Bringing us to here. Sometimes people like to even make things look even more aesthetically pleasing for their uh, final answer here and that is to consolidate your fractions so to speak here uh, 6 and 4 here we can go to 12ths here and give this a 2 over 2 build up give this a 3 over 3 build up and then factor out the 1 12th so then this finally looks like 1 12th and this would be then a 58 minus 3 pi square units. There's our calculus calculation completed there. Hmm. Okay, looking forward to a check on all this because this kind of quantity is a little uh, unnerving until it is uh, found to be consistent with the graphic approximation. Part C. Assess the correctness of parts A and B by examining for a consistency between the two results. Okay, for our assessing the correctness of this, let's look back at our graphic approximation and re-record it here. That was a, an area of about 3.8 square units. Our calculus calculation is well, actually still in sight here. We have the uh, 112 times 58 minus 3 pi square units. Okay, we got to get this into a uh, decimal approximation to uh, compare apples to apples here. And let's see, uh, pi is about 3.14. 3 times pi then would be, uh, let's see, 9.42, 58 minus 9.4 would be 48.6. And so then it just comes down to doing something as simple as this. Let's see, that's 4. Okay, about 4.05. All right, let's see what we think here. This looks actually uh, quite good. Okay, uh, if we take 10% uh, of this, that would be 0.4. We are only about 0.2 apart. So these two results are well within 10% of each other, almost within 5% of each other. We could consider that consistent, and therefore, we believe that the solutions to parts A and B are likely correct. Okay, there's our conclusion in written format. Very good.